previous classes you have learned about uh, Newton's second law and uh, the, the definition of momentum uh, and the related topics. In our class, we are going to learn about the law of conservation of momentum. Here we see uh, two pebbles with masses M1 and M2. Actually, consider the uh, force is applied on these two pebbles. Uh, after applying the force, uh, they were in the motion. Now let us consider the situation. Here, they were in the motion with the initial velocities u1 and u2 respectively. That is uh, the mass m1 with u1 and the mass m2 with u2 are moving uh, in the rectilinear path like this. Uh, let us suppose uh, u1 is greater than u2. So that means the mass m1 is moving with uh, a large velocity, high velocity than the object m2. What happens after uh, moving in this direction? After uh, some time, uh, some duration of the time, uh, they collide with each other. That is common. So they come into contact or they interact. Then what happens? It the uh, mass M1 exerts a force on M2 and in turn according to the Newton third law the M2 also exerts the same amount of force on M1 but in the opposite direction. Let us suppose M1 2 that is the the force applied by uh, pebble 1, let us suppose it is pebble 1 and it is pebble 2. The, the, the F1 and 2 indicates the force applied by the pebble 1 on pebble 2 is F1 2 and in turn the pebble, the second pebble exerts the same amount of force on the pebble 1. But in the opposite direction that is F21. According to the Newton third law, F12 is equal to minus F21. Okay, after the collision, they travel, uh, they continue the uh, rectilinear path like this. So this is the situation. Then let us uh, see how the momentum is changed. Here we write the parameters in a tablet form. Let us suppose it is uh, pebble 1, this is pebble 2, masses, M1 has, uh, pebble 1 has M1 mass and pebble 2 is M2, initial velocity a pebble 1 is u1 and a pebble 2 is u2. Then the initial momentum, the momentum is defined as the product of mass and velocity. Initial momentum that is m1 u1 for pebble 2, this is m2 u2 so after the collision this is uh, the situation before uh, the collision after the collision they gained the velocity v1 and v2 respectively so final momentum i am writing directly mass is m1 and the velocity is v1 then momentum will be m1 v1 and m2 v2. Now let us write the change in the momentum. The change in the momentum, the initial momentum, this is the final momentum. The change can be calculated as a m1 v1 minus 
एम वन यू वन एम वन बी वन माइनस एम वन यू वन हेर आल्सो फॉर पेबल टू आल्सो द चेंज इन द मोमेंटम कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड लाइक एम टू बी टू माइनस एम टू यू टू नाउ विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द टाइम दैट इज the collision time that is uh, the impact time the interaction time uh, let us take as t for the time period t the one in the collision then the rate of change of momentum of these two bodies Can be calculated as m one b one minus m one u one by time period t. M two v two minus m two u two by time period. Let us separate with it like this. Okay. The rate of change of momentum that is the change of momentum can be shown as delta p then this is delta p by delta t okay so during this collision we have observed that f12 and f21 both are equal and in opposite direction so according to the newton Third law, f one two is equal to minus f two, f two one. According to the Newton's uh, second law, the f net or the force is nothing but the rate of change of momentum. The rate of change of momentum. So here. F one two, this is F one two, this is F two one. Then from one and two, from one and two, this is according to the Newton second law. Now write down the values. That is uh, F one two, M one. V one minus M one U one by T is equals minus of M two V two minus M two U two by T. Both the sides T gets cancelled. Here M one V one minus M one U one is equal to minus M two V two plus M two U two, write down this. M one B one minus M one U one is equal minus M two V two plus M two U two. This can be written as M one B one. This minus M two V two. When it comes this side, it become plus m two v two is equals m two u two plus this minus m one u one becomes plus m one u one. So from this, the final equation is like. So I will adjust here. M one U one plus M two U two is equal to M one V one plus M two V two. This is the final equation. Let us elaborate this. What does it explains? M one U one plus M two U two is equal to M one V one plus M two V two. That uh, tells us that 
this is the sum of the momentum before collision this is the sum of the momentum after collision so it is clear that before collision and after collision the momentum is stable it is unchanged in other terms we can say that in a collision of objects the momentum remains unchanged the momentum is conserved so this is the law of conservation of momentum okay children we have completed the lesson let us see what we have learned so far if the board is not visible here we can uh, note down the points yes this is the final formula that we have derived m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 now let us see some uh, videos which involve uh, the law of conservation so far uh, you have learned law of conservation of momentum now let us see a fun activity in which the law of conservation of uh, momentum is involved that is the application of law of conservation of uh, momentum let us see the video all of you watch the video carefully and uh, we will uh, see uh, how the law of uh, conservation of momentum is uh, involved in this uh, fun activity okay Right. Students, uh, have you enjoyed the activity? Have you enjoyed the video? I think so. Let us see how uh, this law of conservation of momentum is involved. The first, there were seven points. Yes. Two, three, four, five, six, and then seven times were taken in this activity if we take one away like this let us uh, take it to hours of the board this is before the collision This is after the collision. So, let us uh, try to calculate the total momentum of this uh, system before collision and after the collision. See, before the collision, it was like this. This was uh, hit the six uh, coins. The initial velocity of uh, this particular kind is, uh, let us say, suppose V. The remaining six were at rest. So, let us say uh, V1 uh, and V2. V1, that is the uh, velocity of this coin with which it was uh, traveling in this way and uh, uh, it was uh, hit this uh, remaining six coins. All they were at rest. Let us suppose uh, the mass of each coin is m. All are uh, of equal masses. So this is uh, m. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 m. Understand? Each are of equal masses. Let us say it as uh, m. Then what uh, will be the momentum? So v1 m plus v2 is 0 into 6 m that is called v1 m 
let us say uh, the velocity of uh, the coil as v instead of v2 it is v doesn't uh, make any difference for convenience only we have taken it as uh, vm this is the total momentum of the this seven coin system before the collision after the collision what happens so the last coin was uh, separated the first one is attached to the system so six remains and one is thrown away now uh, what happens this so all uh, the six were at rest v is equal to zero of the system let us say the velocity of the one coin remaining coin is m automatically what would be the mass 6m is the mass here it is single here now calculate the total uh, mass of the system after the collision that is called momentum is the product of mass and velocity mass is 6m velocity is 0 plus mass is uh, m and velocity is v then it is 0 and this is m v that is nothing but m v see before the collision the total momentum of the system is mv after the collision the total momentum of the system is unchanged and conserved so this one game in this way we have learned about the conservation of the momentum now let us watch some more videos okay impulse of a force in case of a ball hit by a bat or driving a nail into the wooden block with a hammer, the force acts for a short time interval. This force varies with time, hence cannot be measured easily. In such cases, we measure the total effect of the force called as impulse of force. Consider an impulsive force vector f acting on a body of mass m for short time t. The velocity of the body changes from vector u to vector v. According to Newton's second law, vector f is equal to vector p2 minus vector p1 upon t. Impulse of the force or impulse vector f dot t is equal to vector p2 minus vector p1 that equals to vector j that equals to m vector v minus m vector u. This shows that impulse is equal to the change in linear momentum of the body. Impulse is a vector quantity. Its direction is same as that of the force. The SI unit of impulse is same as that of linear momentum that is kg meters per second or Newton. Now we are going to learn uh, one more important uh, concept that is uh, impulse of uh, force. Ok students, uh, I know most of you like uh, the game of uh, cricket. Of course, most of you like to play the cricket whenever uh, you get a free time. So, you might have observed how the batsman hit the ball. When the ball uh, is thrown towards the batsman, the batsman it takes the bat up to some extent back and uh, hits the ball like this. Then what happens? Uh, in this case, have you noticed the force, the transfer from um, through the hands and through the back to the ball? In this case, a huge amount of force is applied on the ball for a, a very small amount of uh, small duration of time. Yes, the condition a very a big amount of force is exerted on the ball for a shorter and shorter duration okay yes 
this is the uh, one instance that we have uh, observed the another one is uh, in our house or surveillance we used to hit the nail uh, with the help of uh, a hammer how we hit so we take a nail and like this with a one stroke we used to hit the nail into the wall or into the wooden block here also what happens a huge amount of force is exerted on the nail uh, for a very short time this is called the impulse of force what happens impulse so in this case of impulse of force we can observe clearly the change in the momentum of the body so the impulse of a force indicates uh, the degree of the momentum or the change in the momentum of a body actually it is not the character of the body rather it tells us the characteristic or the intensity of another character of the object that is uh, the momentum of the body how uh, large the change in the momentum taken place uh, when uh, the, uh, a certain amount of force is exerted on a body so this is what uh, about the impulse of a force now let us try to derive a formula for impulse for that we have to recall the formula that we have uh, learned while learning the newton seconds law according to the newton seconds law the formula is like uh, the f net is equal to the rate of change of momentum so this is the delta p indicates the change of momentum delta t indicates the interaction period the uh, duration of the period in which the two objects interacted or uh, the uh, amount of force amount of momentum is exchanged is denoted by delta t f net denotes the uh, force net force so this is the formula then the impulse of uh, body the equation can be written as delta p is equal to f net into delta t this is the formula for the impulse of a for force or impulse simply so how can we define the impulse in another time so uh, one type of definition is like uh, imp what is impulse a force exerted on a body for a for a very short time is known as impulse in other words the impulse can be defined as the net force acting on a body and the change in the time the interaction time the product of f net and the duration of the interaction is known as the impulse okay this is uh, the formula for the impulse in some books it can be denoted by j j is the impulse j is equal to f net into delta t where delta p or j is the change in the momentum that is why according to this formula also we can define the impulse as a change in the momentum what uh, does it mean change in the momentum initial momentum and final momentum so the change in the momentum can be defined as the difference of final momentum minus initial momentum let us say the mass of a body is equal is m this is the mass is equal to m initial velocity is u final velocity of the body is equal to p then the change in the momentum can be defined as that is denoted by delta p is equal to 
एम वी माइनस एम यू और एम इंटर वी माइनस यू इन दिस केस द इम्पल्स कैन बी रिटर्न एज एम इंटू वी माइनस यू इज इक्वल टू एफ इंटू डेल्टा टी एफ एक्चुअल इट इज एफ एड दिस इज ऑल्सो एन एदर फॉर्मुला फॉर द इम्पल्स यस इम्पल्स इज नथिंग बट the characteristic which denotes the amount of uh, change that occurs in the linear momentum of the system due to the external force the force exerted on the system so with the help of this what happens if impulse uh, happens in a system actually what happens in this case the impact of the force will be very high the impact of the Uh, force will be very high during the impulse so when we hit the a uh, nail with the help of a hammer what happens the impact of the force becomes big and big then the nail get into the wall in the same way with the impact high impact of the force uh, of the bat the ball goes away and even crosses the boundary line so in this case in in the game of cricket uh, also you might have uh, observed uh, when a fielder catches the ball then uh, what he does uh, it is uh, also your common experience when we are trying to catch a ball in cricket then we take back the hands with the ball up to some distance up to some distance like this otherwise what happens if you catch the ball without uh, taking back your hands what happens it will bend your hands it really the ball will uh, give you a, a huge amount of pain in the same way in the game of uh, pole vault or uh, running or jumping what happens after uh, jumping in the pole vault uh, the athlete falls on a cushioned um surface rather than the concrete surface what happens if it is a concrete surface uh the athlete may break his uh, legs or uh, get uh, some pain so in all these cases what happens let us uh, try to see how to reduce the impulse impulse sometimes gives us uh, uh, a kind of pain uh, that we have learned or uh, also impulse sometimes uh, gives us uh, a huge damage 
in the case of uh, in in the case of accident a car hits the wall or a car hits a lorry uh, in that case uh, a large amount of impulse ta uh, takes place it uh, damages uh, even uh, sometimes it may leads to death also so we have to reduce it we have to reduce the impulse then what are the ways let us see what are the ways to reduce the impulse okay as per the definition of the impulse that is the delta uh, p is equal to f net into delta uh, t or f net is equal to delta p by delta t okay this is the impulse this is the force exerted on the body for the short duration see here f net is equal to delta p by delta t in order to decrease the impact of the force that is f net what we have to do we have two chances two options actually what is we have we can decrease the delta p that is the change in the momentum change in the momentum how can we decrease it how can we decrease the uh, change in the momentum that is delta uh, p that is equal to m into delta p m is constant that is the mass of the body is always constant so the change in the velocity leads to the change in the momentum so we have to <coughs> decrease the momentum means we have to decrease the velocity of the body so this is one way so during the accident or during something else we cannot decrease the velocity what we can do so we can increase the impact time if we increase the impact time or interaction time then automatically the f net will be decreased what is our intention we have to decrease the force acting on the body during the collision or something else that is uh, our motto our uh, our aim is to decrease the f net to decrease the f net there are two ways one is decrease the change uh, in the momentum and increasing the interaction time so where um, <coughs> to decrease the effect we have to increase the we have to increase the duration time of impact or decrease the change in the moment there are two ways for us so in the video that you have seen what happens a yeah, cricketer while catching a ball what he does so he takes back his hands with the ball up to some time some duration of the time so what he doing while taking back his hands with the ball so he is increasing the impact time that is the impact of the ball impact impact of the speeding ball on the hands so he is increasing the duration of the traveling time otherwise what happens if he here for example the ball is coming towards me for example i try to catch the ball like this what happens it hits the it's me it, the impact will be very high the impact of the force will be very very high and uh, it will definitely give a uh, pain then what uh, i do to avoid that uh, pain so i just take back my hands along with the ball up to some extent by increasing the traveling time what happens in uh, while uh, when i increase the uh, impact time or the duration of the time automatically the net force will be decreased that means the impulse can be
this is uh, uh, one example for that it is also uh, we may uh, uh, see some more examples in our day to day life well in cars nowadays in cars there are so many safety measures uh, to save the lives of uh, so many uh, people so uh, nowadays uh, the cars are coming with the uh, airbags what uh, does the airbags do during an accident that is high amount of uh, force the airbags uh, in a collision automatically they gets opened then uh the traveling the uh, the traveling time of the collision will be increased automatically uh, automatically the impact of the force can be decreased so this is how uh, the airbags can save us uh, uh from uh, big uh, accidents from injuries uh, or some uh, in some cases death also so this is the application of the uh impulse and how to uh, decrease the effect of the impulse okay student here is the uh, problem a hammer of mass 400 grams moving at 30 meter per second strikes a nail the nail stops the hammer in a very short time of uh, 0.1 uh, seconds what is the okay children so far we have learned about uh, the law of conservation of momentum and the impulse of uh, force and uh, how uh, we can reduce the uh, impact of the impulse now let us try to uh, do some uh, problems okay let us see in the first problem okay this is the first problem what it says is 400 kg it is given that the mass of the hammer let us say that is m is equal to 400 grams that is nothing but nothing but in mks we have to measure it in kilograms that is why it is converted into kg then uh, it becomes 0.4 or 0.4 kg the uh, velocity of the hammer the hammer was moving uh, with uh, the velocity at uh, 30 meter per uh, second it is given that the initial velocity of the hammer let us say as u is equal to 30 meter per second when uh, the hammer touches the nail it becomes the velocity becomes the zero then the velocity of the hammer becomes zero that is the final velocity of hammer that is v is equal to zero then what would be the change in the velocity that is delta v delta v is equal to u minus v that is a change it is equal to 30 minus 0 is equal to 30 meter per second that is the change in the velocity okay now the duration of the impact that the duration of the impact it is given that that is uh, delta t is equal to it is given as 0.1 second 0. Point, actually it is 01 second then we have to find out the force exerted by the nail on the hammer to uh, stop its momentum the stop its more motion that is uh, we have to find out f net 
how much effort. So while solving the uh, problems uh, like uh, verbal problems, we have to first uh, write the steps like this. What are given? What is to be found? So what are given? M is given. The uh, change in velocity is given. The time duration is given. We have to find out F net. Then we have to look to what uh, really links between the given values and the value to be found. So that is uh, a relation. Uh, what is the relation between F and all these things? Automatically, uh, the Newton second law comes to our mind. That is, uh, F net is equal to delta P by delta V. In other words, what is delta P? That is M into delta V by delta V. So with the help of this uh, formula, we have to find out F net. So it is equal to substituting the values. What is M? Or N 4 into what is delta V? It is 30 by what is uh, delta T? Impact uh, type that is 0 0.01. So, solving uh, this 12.0 by 0 0.01. Then, two decimals uh, we have to um, increase, then we will get 1200 newtons. So, in this case, the nail requires uh, the force is 1200 to stop the so this is the here is the uh, problem number two note down it and uh, let us uh, solve the problem okay children you have seen the uh, problem number two now uh, let us find out the solution let us uh, try to solve it so the problem is like uh, a car of uh, weight uh, 3600 kg it is uh, moving with the uh, initial speed uh, of 100 meter per 100 km per hour and uh, it collides uh, head on um, with a wall uh, for a shorter duration of uh, 0 uh, 0.1 seconds uh, uh, the collision uh, took place then we have to find find out uh, the impulse of the collision that is the the impulse of the wall exerted on the car now let us find out first step is what are given the mass of the car the mass of car that is uh, let us say m is equal to 3600 kg and uh, the speed of the car also given the initial speed that is initial velocity actually in a linear momentum there is no change at all between velocity and speed initial velocity let us say u it is given 100 kilometers per hour we have to convert it into the meter per second. So for that we have to multiply with pi by 18. Then pi hundred by 18. Then with two we can strike it out. Two fifty and two nines. Then it becomes. 250 by 9 that is joule. So after uh, uh, hitting the wall the car comes to rest that is uh, the final velocity of the car is 0 let us say v 0 then change in the velocity that is let us say as uh, v that is uh, v minus u is equal to 0 minus 250 by 9 that is minus 250 by 9 
okay not this uh, minus also it is there i will uh, tell you the importance now time duration the time of impact of the impulse or the force that is uh, 0 0.10 second actually it is given that is 10 is nothing but 1 second 0 0.1 second we have to find out the impact of the uh, the force of the ball on the car that is F net how much it is as uh, we solved earlier problem the formula here also is the same that is F net is equal to delta P by delta T that is nothing but M into delta V by delta T so substituting the values M is nothing but 3600 into delta V is minus 250 by 9 by 0 0.1 so minus comes first 3 by 9 into 0.1 9 ones are 9 fours that means 400 so how much it is uh, 25 to 4 that is uh, 100 it is minus 1 2 25 to 4 is 100 then 1 2 3 zeros 1 2 3 zeros by 0 0.1 then one more zero will come in the numerator 1 2 3 4 5 6 that is called minus 10 rises to 6 Hence, the minus indicates uh, the force on the car the, uh, of the collision. So here we have to uh, make use of uh, the Newton second law that is F net is equal to delta P by delta Like this we can solve the problems. So uh, we come to the end of this lesson. In this lesson, uh, let us recall what we have uh, learned. So starting with uh, Newton first law which deals with inertia and Newton second law which uh, deals with the momentum of the uh, uh, system or body and third law action reaction frame and of course impulse and uh, uh, the factors uh, uh, that we can uh, reduce the impulse and of course the problems okay students this is very very important uh, topic in your higher uh, studies or in, uh, in your higher class also these concepts are very useful Hope you, you all enjoy well 